Hey guys, how you doing? Uncle Steph here. So I got an email from somebody asking me a question about career. So I'm going to read the email. It's an interesting story. I'm going to use different names to protect her identity in different uh, countries. So anyway, let me just get to it. And I think you guys will find it super useful because it's about career. It's about transitioning into a new career, remote jobs, software development. What can you do? What should you do? So you're going to learn about that whole thing, the whole business end of it. But you're also going to understand where software development is going in the AI age. You can't think about software development as you did four years ago, three years ago, two years ago. You have to think about it how it is now. So that's what we're going to do in this video. So she starts, hi Stefan, I hope you don't mind me responding to your email. She's on my newsletter, links below. With a plea for advice, I am a 52-year-old single parent. My son has complex needs and I'm a sole carer. After many failed attempts at trying to work remotely, the jobs are never fully remote, she says. I have signed up to a government-funded developer course, level two free course, I start September 1st. She continues, I have zero knowledge or experience I have been obsessively watching videos. Signed up to a Python course, not mine. Big mistake, number one. Big mistake. Almost as bad as learning Ruby. But anyway, uh, so she signs up to a Python course to prep for what's coming. She says, I'm a rabbit in the headlights. Out here in Canada, in Canada, A, eh? we say a deer in the headlights, but anyway. And already feel like I'm not clever enough to do this. It took me 10 minutes to work out how to do a backslash on a Mac. <laughs> oh, we've all been there. Back in the 90s, I used to live in a very tall building, 25 stories tall. And right down the core of the city. And uh, no, anyway, I was on the 25th floor. And I would keep the windows open as I was writing code. I was just learned to write software. This is like the early 90s. And oftentimes when people would be walking around downtown, around my building, they would hear random yelling and screaming from out of nowhere. Like, Who the hell is screaming out there? That was me trying to figure out where the damn backslash was or other keyboard strokes or trying to figure out why the damn code wasn't working, looking for that missing semicolon in my JavaScript. So yes, when you are starting to learn code and software development, for most of us, you're entering a whole new world. And so you have to give your brain time to rewire itself to understand this stuff. One day you wake up and you go, oh, I understand this is so easy. Until you get there, it's going to be a struggle. So don't let that, um, those speed bumps, if you will, don't let that, that dissuade you from moving forward. For me, I've always felt if something is hard, that means that you're making progress in a new direction, which is good ultimately for your uh, longevity, both physical, mental, emotional. So yeah, just keep going. Write a little code every day. It has a huge impact. She continues, I came across your videos and really connected with your communication style. In many other videos I've watched, I usually end with what was that all about? I appreciate that this is your living. You may not you may not want to engage in free advice, but I would be most grateful if you could steer me in the right direction. How can I prep for courses without becoming overwhelmed? You do a little bit every day. It's kind of like working out. You don't want to burn yourself and do too much at the same time. So she says, how can I prep for the course without becoming overwhelmed? What computer basics will I need to know prior? How can I keep motivated and confident? So the question number one is how do you prep to learn how to code? Just start writing a little bit of code every day. So take whatever course you have. You should have done my interactive Python course because it makes it super easy. But anyway, take whatever course you have or use, even use ChatGPT or Grok or whatever and start writing a little Python code daily. Uh, well, Python. Doesn't matter what language, Python, HTML, CSS, doesn't matter. Uh, I Whatever it is, whatever programming language you're going to be learning, just write a little bit every day, a little bit every day. Um, and even if you don't exactly know 
what it is you are writing, you don't fully understand it, that's okay. The important thing is that you interact with the code, you type the code out, you get it to work, and then once you get it to work, break it in a particular way, like change it, move, remove a, a space in Python, or remove a carriage return, or, or remove a semicolon in JavaScript, or just change it a little bit, and see what the error looks like, and then fix it again, and then do it again. And, this process of writing the code until you get it to work, even if you don't understand exactly what the code is doing, then breaking it and then looking at the error messages and acknowledging the error messages and then getting it to work again, etc., back and forth, back and forth. It's very important that you engage with the code this way and you got to type it out. Don't just read it. You got to type it out, engage with it, run it. This is going to tell your brain to put resources into learning how to code. You're giving multiple uh, signals to the brain, both visual, auditory, because you're going to hear you type the keyboard, the brain's going to hear you tick, 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 and also tactile. The more you can stimulate the brain via the various senses of our body, the more quickly your brain will put the resources to learn the new way of thinking, in this, in this case, programming. Daily exposure is also very important. Even just 20 minutes a day has a huge impact on top in terms of this. So she says, uh, how can I keep motivated and confident in my abilities to learn something new from scratch? Well, the key to that is very simple. You do that daily 20 minutes minimum, and even just 20 minutes a day is gonna push the ball forward. And as you do daily exposure, you're gonna start learning more and more and more. And then when you start understanding things, uh, it will give you the motivation. You go, oh, geez, I understand this. You also want to use little psychological tricks. Well, they're not tricks, it's just the way the brain works. You want to associate uh, rewards with coding. So maybe you write some code and give yourself a little reward for that. I don't know what that might be. Have a tea or coffee or something. Uh, do something that you like. So this way your brain starts creating Positive connections to coding, positive connections to coding, positive connections to coding. Also remember the advantage of being a professional developer will have for you in terms of freedom and financial freedom. Remind yourself of that. That's how you stay motivated in that regard. She then says, am I too old and delusional? No, not at all. In fact, I encourage people, like, you know, I don't believe in retirement as a basic concept. I believe in rather figuring out what you like to do and then making that the way you earn your living. Now you got to be realistic. You know, you may like, uh, I don't know, gardening, but I don't know if you can make money being, well, you might be able to make money working for a public garden or something. But you know what I mean? You got to find something fairly realistic. The great thing about development and coding, there's so many different styles of it and there's so many different ways you can position yourself as a developer that um, you could probably you could probably find a specialization a specialization of development of that will work for you so it's a bit of an exploration but the key thing is you want to uh, do daily exposure at 20 minutes a day you want to write the code don't make the mistake I made initially just trying to become an academic and just study it write it every day write it write it break it fix it write it break it fix it Follow along step by step. Have faith that the process will have its outcome. So what's going to happen one day, you may be very confused about I don't know, how to create a function. You want to know what a function is. You want to know what a return type is. You want to understand the code. Then one day you're going to wake up and you're going to go, oh, geez, it's so easy. What has happened in that situation? What happens is that when you keep your brain continuous exposure, the brain realizes it better learn this. And then when it finally makes those synaptic connection once it makes those connections all of a sudden you understand so she goes on to say i live in i live in uh scotland i'm on benefits and broke and desperately need to turn my life around however however due to my son's care pretty much housebound don't worry i've been housebound for decades uh, you can make it work i was successful and clever in my career before motherhood so there you go uh, I project managed the opening of luxury stores in the Middle East. However, my brain has 
has had to be used in very different ways for 20 years. Eh, it's like riding a bike. You get back to it. You know what's really cool? Since you've opened stores, um, that's how software is kind of like that too, especially if you're on a high level position, especially in the A AI age of development, you're more of that type of developer now, as opposed to be a detail-oriented person. The modern developer, the more advanced developers, actually are more architectural in their nature, their bigger picture, macro picture. You still have to understand the details. That's why I tell people, even in the AI age, you learn your foundations of coding, but then you gotta lean heavily on the AI. Remember, software development has nothing, is nothing to do with memorization. Never has, never has been. People used to think it's memorization. It's never been about memorization. Whoever, there, there are silly companies out there and schools who would test on memorization, which is the silliest thing, because even before AI, everybody used Google and Stack Overflow to, and IDEs, Integrated Development Environment Tools. These are just pieces of software people use to code. You don't have to remember anything. I literally forget just about everything I used to know. But most importantly, I understand the concepts and the logic. So if I forget, I'll say, but so how do I do, I want to I want to create a, thre a threaded application in Java. How do I do it? I used to do it. I don't remember how to do it now. I couldn't, I don't even remember the basic methods. But you know what? It's no big deal. I go to Google, threading. Google, I, even better yet, I go to ChatGPT or Grok or Gemini. Java thread, please, bing, boop. But you gotta know what threading is about. You have to understand why you would use threading, when you would use threading, you know? That's where the knowledge comes in. So to conclude, um, daily exposure to code, make sure you type out the code, get it to work, break the code, give yourself rest. 20 minutes a day is fine to start. It was, it's a bit of a hack, because when you do 20 minutes a day, uh, it's a discipline. So that if you don't feel like doing any work, you just do that 20 minutes and you're looking after a special needs child. So that's gonna give you a lot of flexibility. Some days you may do 45 minutes, some days you may do two hours. And don't worry, concepts that are uh, total black magic voodoo to you now, in time, and it could be a very short period of time, uh, it will, you'll come to understand them. Daily exposure is the key. Frequency of exposure is the key. It's better that you do an hour a day, four days a week, then do 10 hours on Sunday. You know what I mean? Meaning you want to give breaks, kind of like training. When you go to the gym, you don't want to train 10 hours in one day, you're gonna kill yourself. You train half an hour, an hour on Monday, an hour on Wednesday, an hour on Saturday, or even 40 minutes. Like me, because I'm old and decrepit, I will uh, only train in the gym twice a week max, because my body takes time to recover. You're old like me, it takes time to recover. But it's good, I'm making gains. I do walking every day, which brings me, to, brings me to my final point. Do not underestimate the importance of physical health and diet in terms of your cognitive capacity. If you eat natural foods, cut down your carbo, carb intake, eat natural clean foods, uh, you get your body fat percentage down, assuming you're overweight like most of us, um, and just walk every day, drink lots of water, Maybe a little coffee to help you out if you need it. Uh, that lifestyle, cut out the alcohol, cut out the excess sugars, blah, 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 blah. Um, you do that, your cognitive capacity will shoot up, your energy levels will shoot up, your mood will shoot up. So don't underestimate the value of proper health and nutrition in your learning. Oh, one last point. Learn the foundations of code. Uh, right code every day, but what you got to do is you got to get into the AI space. Get ChatGPT or Gemini or both. Start working with them. Start understanding the different AIs. They, they call models. So you got the Gemini model. You got the ChatGPT models. You got uh, the Grok model. Start understanding the models. By understanding the models, you become far more valuable. And your ultimate goal, I'll put it here, agentic agent development, agentic agent development with MCP. You do that, you're going to become a very valuable developer indeed. Very valuable. All right, I'm Uncle Steph. I hope you found this useful.